we stand to receive Mary's remains. May the God of hope give you the fullness of peace, and may the Lord of life be always with you. In the waters of baptism, Mary died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. of Christ. May she now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father, as we put the book of the Gospels on our coffin. Would you like to read that for us, Larry, please? In baptism, Mary received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. And we put this cross on our coffin. Thank you, Larry. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. The family of the Trinity welcomes us into their loving presence. Whether we gather inside church or in our homes, we are united through our common baptism in this one spirit. So we assemble as children of God, disciples of the Trinity, for Mary's requiem mass. So prompted by the Holy Spirit, we bless ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So we include in our liturgy today Mary's relations and friends and neighbours who join us online. So we welcome you with us today. We gather here and assemble with her sister Antoinette, her brother Fergus, brothers and sister-in-law Vincent, John and Rita, nephews and nieces Tara, Alastair, Sandra, Joanne, David, Deirdre, Anne, Phoebe, and Olivia, grandnieces, grandnephews, 
relatives, neighbours and friends. And maybe a special welcome to those who have travelled a distance to be with us today. We are very welcome as we gather here for Mary's Requiem Mass. We remember in prayer her parents, Thomas and Anna, her husband, Harold, her sister, Pauline, who are present among us in the communion of the saints. So we take a moment and we ask for the Lord's forgiveness for our failings as we prepare to celebrate this Mass. So if there's anything in our minds that we want to ask the Lord for forgiveness for, let's do it now. Christ our Lord came to invite us into the Father's kingdom. Lord our God, you know all things. You know that we want to be more generous in serving you and our neighbour. Look on us with love and hear our prayer for a fresh start. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May you, almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Mary, also find new strength. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. So if we take our seats for a little while, we ask Tara and David, please, to lead us in God's word. And our responsorial psalm and our gospel acclamation will be sung today. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to rest and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by, his father's, by the Father's glory, we might too live a new life. But we believe that having die, died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. The word of the Lord. Thanks. stand to greet our gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It was about the sixth hour and the sun had eclipsed. A darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle and when Jesus cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. With these words, he breathed his last. Then a member of the council arrived, an upright and virtuous man named Joseph. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a shroud, and put it in a tomb which was hewn in stone, in which no one had yet been laid. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, the women went to the tomb with spices that they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb but on entering, discovered that the Lord Jesus was not there. As they stood there not knowing what to think, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at their side. Terrified, the two women lowered their eyes. But the two men said to them, Why look among the dead for someone who is alive. He is not here. He has risen. The Gospel of the Lord. So, if you could take your seats, please. The characters in our Gospel passage Jesus, his father, Joseph, Pilate, the women, and two men dressed in white. It's amazing, it's a very, very interesting little passage from our scripture. In this gospel passage, we have this painful yet beautiful story about Jesus trusting his father and speaking to his father at each stage of his life. It is also a story of people distraught after the death of Jesus, yet coming to retrieve his body and prepare it with great dignity for burial. Further, it is a story of people who found themselves in deep muddle 
about the transformation from death into a further life. It's a powerful tale, one filled with lessons about dealing with loss, suffering, disappointment, about discernment, about finding hope in a situation, trusting in a greater power, loving against all odds. Like many gospel stories, the disciples and followers began out of step with Jesus. But through turmoil and reflection, they eventually walked the road with the risen Christ, sometimes aware of his presence, other times unsure. Mary was no different. Mary was born, mind, body, and soul, 83 years ago. She received the sacrament of baptism, celebrated the sacraments of reconciliation, Eucharist, confirmation, and marriage. More recently, she received the sacrament of the sick, deepening her relationship with God the Father. Mary was a very efficient, particular, and capable woman with a soft voice and a backbone of steel who traveled widely inside Ireland and in the USA and Canada. She began her career as a catering manager with the sugar company in Newbridge and moved to the National Gallery. With Harold, her husband, Mary moved to New York for 10 years, where she set up a unique antique shop selling lamps. She retired to Ireland to her family, who were so important to her. She was kind and generous, gentle and caring, with her nephews and nieces and their children. She cherished them, and they thought the world of her, as did all her family. Mary's strong faith buoyed her through the vulnerable years of grief, and indeed the COVID times, when she was distant and isolated from others. For Mary, Mass, and daily prayers were so important. And if we can turn to ourselves for a moment or two. Like those who gathered around Jesus, you, Mary's family, have encountered the ache of separation, losing someone we admire, respect, and have a relationship with brings the pain of loss. Like them, you have assembled to collect and prepare her body for burial, with someone taking the lead role of planning. We have swapped stories of the journey that was her life, with its joys and its sadness. We have reflected on how Mary coped with the various stages of her life, and what influenced how she coped. We ponder her beautiful story of trusting in God the Father and speaking to him at each moment of her life. Also, we have dared to ponder what lies ahead of her. Maybe we find ourselves in a deep muddle about the transformation from death into further life. Like the early disciples and followers, we begin out of step with Jesus, but through the turmoil and reflection, we may eventually walk the road with the risen Christ. The powerful tale of the gospel 
the lives of the disciples and Mary's story are flesh books, faith stories for each of us to ponder. Our requiem, requiem Mass for Mary will hopefully prompt us to look at glimpses of the Lord on our faith journey and hopefully invite us to explore our relationship with the risen Lord. We are invited to deepen our personal relationship with our God in the turns of our lives. I wonder how our faith story will read, how we will deal with loss, suffering and disappointment, what we will learn about discernment, about finding hope in any situation, about trusting in a greater power, about loving against all odds. Good to let that sink in just for a moment into my head and maybe also into yours. So now we bring our prayers before the Lord and I ask Anne, Alistair, Sinead and Eva please to come up to lead us in God's word. If we trust in God, he will take care of us in life and in death. So let us stand and let us pray in confidence to him in our hour of need. Now that Mary's labours and sufferings are over, may God bring her to a place of light, happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That God may pardon her sins, Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. That God may comfort us who mourn Mary and help us to comfort one another, Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. That God may reward those who cared for Mary in her illness, Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. That her memory may live on among us, Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. That all the dead, especially our relatives and friends, may enjoy eternal life, Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. Lord, Lord, may you support us all day long till the shadows lengthen and evening falls and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So we take our seats for a moment, but for a few moments, and we move now to the altar here um, and Deirdre and Phoebe are going to bring up our bread and our wine for us.
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look favorably upon our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Mary may be taken into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And together let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, and by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to the earth from which we came. And when you give this sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son, shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be gathered may be a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. and the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice 
Look, we pray, upon the offering, the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, Almighty Father, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for eternal help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Eamon and Michael our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Mary, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters also, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall become like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we stand and we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And in some way, let us pass on a sign of sharing the peace of Christ with those around us. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. So as we kneel, we pray. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now for communion today, I'll go down to the front and if you come up in the two rows and go down by the sides, we do have celiac hosts. If anyone is a celiac, please just ask.
and let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Mary, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. So a word of thanks to those who have helped us in our celebration today. To David and Andrea for our music and our song. Thank you very much. Very beautifully done. It's beautiful. To Tara and David who led us in God's word. To Anne, Alistair, Sinead and Ava who proclaimed the prayer of the faithful for us especially Sinead with that lovely voice. And to Deidre and Phoebe who brought up our, our bread and our wine for us. And to Antoinette who helped to prepare our liturgy today, who put so much work planning and uh, preparation into it. And we thank also our sacrist and Sandra who sets everything up and prepares everything for us. The invisible one who does so much work here so we thank her as well so we come now to our farewell and to our commendation before we go our separate ways let us take leave of our sister may our farewell express our affection for her May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. So we bless her coffin with holy water in a moment of silence, ask, reminding us of her baptism and reminding us of our own baptism and inviting us to explore what it means uh, to be baptized. And also we will incense her remains to remind ourselves that our bodies, yours and mine's, and formerly Mary's, are temples of the Holy Spirit. The response to our prayer is, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. 
May Christ, who, may Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. When we come to our prayer of commendation. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Mary in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she may rise with him on the last day. We give thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on Mary in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother forever. We make this commendation through Christ our Lord. And in peace, let us take our sister to our place of rest. <laughs>